And I love the Word, so you're going to hear a lot of scriptures tonight. So I hope you brought your Bible. If not, you got your phone. But look at Ephesians. Pastor was saying this just a, just a minute ago. And just so y'all know, I read out of the New Living Translation uh, just because it's an easy read. And when I quote scriptures in the street with my Texas accent, I'm not saying these and thous because I don't know if you saw my story post today. Um, when I got a coffee here at Starbucks earlier, they thought my name, they said, can we get your name? I said, Riley. And they said, uh, Radley, I think they wrote on my cup. So, so I, I just try to be as simple as I can. But look at Ephesians 4 in verse 11. It says, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work to build up the church, the body of Christ. See, Pastor Doug was saying it's Pastor Hank and Brenda's job and the rest of the pastoral staff here is to teach you, train you, equip you, and mobilize you to do the work of the ministry. Amen? If there's any empty seats in the building, it's not the pastor's fault that that people aren't here. It's our fault because we didn't invite them. Amen? And so did you see in there, um, one of the reasons is um, people think that they are called or have the gift of evangelism. Have you ever heard that before? Well, I, I don't, I'm not like Brother Riley. I don't have the gift of evangelism. Have y'all heard that before? There's no such thing as the gift of evangelism. Did y'all see that in here? It says, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And so standing here today, right now behind this pulpit, I am standing in the gift of an evangelist. I'm teaching you, training you, equipping you, and then I'm going to mobilize you to do the work of the ministry. Amen? And so go to your, um, go to your handout. And let's go over this real quick. Why are Christians not sharing their faith? Well, I've done this a lot, and the number one reason uh, people say is fear. Can y'all agree with that? Look at Psalm 118. Let me get over there. Psalm 1, eight. well, let's go to uh, Psalm 34 first, and then we'll go to 118. Psalm 34, verse 4. We got to do this one first. It says, Psalm 34, verse 4, I prayed to the Lord, he answered me, and he freed me from all my fears. So if some of us are a little shy, a little timid about sharing our faith, all we have to do is pray to him, he'll answer us, and he'll free us from all the fear. Amen? So let's do this. Say, Heavenly Father, as I just saw in your word, if I pray to you, you'll answer me, and you'll free me now from the fear of witnessing. I'm now free in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if some of y'all were a little timid, a little shy, or a little afraid of sharing your faith, you have no excuse anymore, amen? Because if the Word says it, then you're free, right? John eight thirty six says, if the Son sets you free, then what's the rest of the verse? Indeed, you're free, amen? Now go to Psalm 118. Psalm 118, verse 6, it says, The Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can people do to me? What can they do to us? I flew in this morning at around 9 o'clock. I like to get where I'm going early. That way, if flights are delayed, I can still get there by 7 o'clock tonight. Amen. But I got here early, and I was uh, waiting to have lunch with Pastor Doug, and I ride a Harley, so I like going to the Harley stores wherever I'm at. And so I went to this uh, Defiance Harley Davidson here in Omaha, and as soon as I walked in, they had a booth 
um, this lady in front, and she said, hey, we want you to register for this. And so I just listened to her. I had a little time, you know, to spend there. And so I was, I filled out the, you can win a, you know, an Ultra Glide Classic or whatever. You can win this Harley. Okay. You know, I filled everything out. Then I had to go to another booth, and I got this free um, poker chip. Um, so I just walked around there, and I was nice to everyone. And then I probably spent an hour in there, and I was just talking to them, you know. But on my way out, the lady that had me fill everything out, she went outside to smoke a cigarette, and her name was Sarah. And I said, and she said to me before I let, before I started saying this, she said, hey, thank you for being so nice to all the employees. And I said, well, well, thank you for being nice. It was a blessing being in here. Cause, and she knew I was a minister because she asked me what I was doing in Omaha, you know, and I told her I'm a minister. We're doing a meeting here. And I said on the way out, I said, hey, Sarah, let me ask you, a long time from now when you pass away, where are you going to go? And she said, man, I believe, I believe in a higher power, you know. And then another lady walks out, and they were, you know, she wanted a cigarette, so they were, they kind of interrupted me talking. And so I said, and she had a little name tag. I think her name was Wendy. I said, hey, Wendy, I just asked Sarah a long time from now when you pass away, where are you going to go? Oh, I'm a Christian. I know I'm going to heaven. And uh, I said, well, you won't mind if we pray with uh, Sarah then. And so I prayed with Sarah. She received Jesus, accepted Jesus. And then the, Wendy walked back in the store. I was going to pray with her if she needed prayer for anything. But uh, And she thanked, thanked me after the prayer. But what can they do to us? I'm standing in front of the Harley store praying with this um, lady. What, what are they going to do, run me out of there? I was already outside of the store. They can't do anything to us, amen? Because first of all, walking through there, I was real nice and talking to everyone, so I wasn't a threat, and I wasn't, and I want to say this, I believe one of the reasons why Christians aren't sharing their faith is because they've seen people downtown with the Bible yelling at people, telling them they're going to hell, telling ladies you should wear a different outfit, telling you know, all these things, and nobody wants to be a part of something like that. And when you're doing that kind of ministry, it's more about you than it is that person. I care more about the person. She was saying, you know, I'm spiritual. I believe in a higher power. I'm not religious. I said, I'm not religious. I believe in Jesus, and I believe, you know, um, that it's about a relationship, not a religion. You know, and so I make it about the person. I'm more interested in their heart, not in how many scriptures I can quote to them. Amen? So it's about them. And look at the next one, Proverbs 29. We, our heart has to be on the person, not about our agenda. Not, and really, I mean, y'all know my goal is they say the prayer and receive Jesus. But my, if they don't pray with me, then my faith is in the Word of God. Look at uh, Proverbs 29, 25. It says there, Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. And the Message Bible there says, The fear of human opinion disables, but trusting in God protects you from that. So the fear of human opinion disables. So tonight... If I was worried about what y'all were thinking about me, maybe my Texas accent here in the Midwest, or maybe the way I do my hair, or whatever y'all think. He's got a monotone voice. If I was worried about trying to please y'all, would I be a people pleaser? What if God was telling me to say something and I didn't say it because I might, I, I'm thinking I might offend you? Would I be a people pleaser? Well, I love y'all, but I'm going to say what he tells me to say. Amen? And, and look at what the Passion Bible says there. It says, fear and intimidation is a trap that holds you back. So there are people, and tonight we're going to go to the Walmart that's close here. I don't know if all of us can go. We'll have to break up. There's probably a Walmart a little further down or something. But 
when we're walking through there, we're going to ask the Lord, who should we talk to? And you can't let fear and intimidation hold you back any longer. Amen? I used to be the shyest person you would meet, believe it or not. I, as you can see, I'm a redhead. I was redhead when redhead wasn't cool. Now people are paying to be redheads. Amen? <laughs> But I was abused as a kid. I had acne when I was young, and I just had a lot of shame, and, and I didn't um, want to talk to anybody. When I would go into a grocery store and buy my groceries, I didn't want the cashier to say anything other than the price of the groceries. Um, but going through these scriptures, the Lord helped me come out of that shell because when we see someone walking, they're, they're either on their way to heaven or they're on their way to hell. And God has given us the ability to lead them to him because it's not about us. And look at uh, 1 John 4. And I have a question for you all after we read this. 1 John 4, 18. Such love has no fear because perfect love does what? If we're afraid, it's for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. We love each other because he loved us first. So let me ask y'all, if perfect love casts out the fear or expels all the fear, is it a fear problem? Because I said fear is probably the number one reason, right? Is it a fear problem or is it a love problem? Amen? Because if you truly love me, and I'm your neighbor, if you truly love me, you're going to share your faith with me. I was, some of y'all may have seen this, but this was years ago, and one of the, uh, one of, it's a guy that does a show, I'm not going to tell his name, but it's a guy that does a show in Las Vegas, and he's a well-known atheist. And he has a little meet and greet after his show, a little VIP thing. And he said this guy walked up to him with a New Testament Bible with his name, address, phone number, email, you know, every way he could to contact him. He said he handed him this New Testament and started talking to him. And he said, I'm an atheist, I'll always be an atheist, but... But he said, I truly believe in proselytizing is what he said, because he said, if you truly believe there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun, how bad do you hate me if you don't share your faith with me? And that was powerful. That really got a hold of me when I saw this video, and y'all may have seen it, but how bad do we hate? And I, I said this to Pastor, we were talking today at lunch, but you know, if you're, I know ladies, y'all tell one another whether you can go get a good bag or, you know, guys, we like to talk about Harleys or talk about uh, all kinds of hunting or fishing or even, uh, you know, who could tell me tonight, and y'all can talk, I want this to be a casual, not just a preaching, but I'll open it up at the end for questions, but if I wanted to go to the best steakhouse in Omaha, where would I go? Who can tell me? Where? Longhorn. All right, who else would agree Longhorn? All right, who has another one? Mahogany, okay. Where? Brother Sebastian, okay. Texas Roadhouse, okay. The Drover, okay. So, see, I know I ate, when I was in Minneapolis just a few weeks ago, I ate at, I say, it is the best steakhouse I've ever eaten my whole life. And I started texting people about it that live in that area. Well, that's what we do on those type things, right? How much more should we be telling people about Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who died on the cross for us and has made a way, a path for us to be free from sin and free from shame. How much more should we be talking about him? Amen? And so that's just, it. I would say it's a love problem, not a fear problem. And these, you know, uh, Second Timothy, go over there. This is our foundation uh, scripture for the way the Lord gave us how to teach this evangelism. 
go to Second Timothy. And I want to start reading in verse 5, 2 Timothy 1, 5. It says, I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. This is why I remind you to fan into flame the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. That's what we're doing tonight. We're stirring it up. Amen. He says, God has not given us the spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline or a sound mind. And look at what verse 8 says. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. So he's talking about sharing your faith there. God didn't give us the fear. Because you all know that one verse I read, um, Proverbs 29, the King James there says, the fear of man brings a snare. So if I'm afraid, if the Lord said, hey, go talk to this guy, and I walked up, and he looks bigger than me, he looks like he could beat me up, chew me up, and spit me out, then the fear of man brought a snare. And it's like if you're a guy that wears a tie, it's like the devil pulls your chain and keeps you from um, sharing your faith. That's the spirit of fear. See, we have to recognize like even tonight when we walk out and start to do this, the spirit of fear will try to come on you. And you know, the Bible says, um, su submit to God, resist the devil, and what's going to happen? Right. So we recognize, all right, spirit of fear, I see you. Be gone in Jesus' name. We submit to God because he says do this, right? And then spirit of fear has to leave. So God didn't give us a spirit of fear. What did he give us? He gave us power, love, and a sound mind. Look at this, and I'm just going to read for the sake of time this handout. But Romans 1.16, it says, I'm not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work saving everyone who believes. So what's the, what's the power of God? The Word of God, amen? Let's read it again. I'm not ashamed of this good news. Say good news about Christ. It, the good news, is the power of God at work saving everyone who believes. See, we all had to hear the Word of God before we got saved, right? You had to hear the news before you received it and accepted. So say this. Say the Word of God is the power of God. Now look at Isaiah 55 in verse 8. It says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. The Message Bible says, I don't think the way you think. The way you work isn't the way I work. See, we all in our natural thinking, and you all know, uh, I know Pastor has taught you all that we're a threefold being, right? We are a spirit being, right? We have a soul. It's made up of our mind, will, and emotions. And then we live in a physical body, right? And so when we accept Jesus like Sarah today in front of the Harley store, what part of Sarah got saved? Her spirit, right? Her spirit, when I quoted the scriptures, her spirit received it. And then the Bible says you have to believe it in your heart, then confess it with your mouth, right? So she began to confess it out of her mouth from her spirit. And then um, that's why... God is saying here, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. I don't work how you work. So when someone gets saved, we speak to their spirit man. Look at verse 11. It says, it is the same with my word. Say my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It'll accomplish all I want it to and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Let's say Sarah said, well, you know, I'm here at work. On my break, smoking a cigarette, I don't want to pray with you. Um, have a nice day. Well, Sarah will be saved at some point because his word will not return void. Amen? God is going to send another laborer across her path. She's going to wake up. You know, that guy, that country guy from Texas quoted Romans 3. My granny gave me a Bible years ago, and it's on the shelf. Let's go see what Romans 3 says, or Romans 10, 9, and 10. Amen? And look at Jeremiah 1, 12. 
And the Lord said, that's right. And it means that I'm watching and I will certainly carry out all my plans. The Amplified Classic says, I'm watching over my word to perform it. So a lot of us have been waiting on God to send us, right? Lord, send me to the nation. Send me, Lord, send me. He's saying, I'm waiting on you. See, we've been waiting on God to give us a, a plan, give us a, and he said, go. Amen? He's watching, he's waiting on us to speak his word out of our mouth so he can confirm it. Look at Hebrews 4. This is the good part. Look at Hebrews 4. For the word of God, say the word of God. Notice there it didn't say my personal testimony. It says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It, the word of God, exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. So it's the word when we walk up to someone, and y'all, did everybody get one of these? Everybody got one? Okay, so when we walk up to someone, we start asking the questions. When we start reading Romans 3 to them, the Bible says um, the Word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. It divides between their natural thinking, their soul, their mind, will, and emotions, and then their spirit. And the Bible even says that it discerns the thoughts and intents of their heart. So maybe, like today, maybe Sarah was thinking about something else or but when I started quoting the scriptures, the word of God divided between her natural thinking. Look at um, this sitting on your, this isn't on your, go to 1 Corinthians 2. It's not on your notes, but I just feel led to share this right now. But 1 Corinthians 2, the word of God will... Look at 1 Corinthians 2, 14. It says, because we've been taught in past um, evangelistic approaches is we need to reason with them, right? So what is reasoning? If you're reasoning with them, you're reasoning with their intellect, right? And so let's read it like this. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. It says, but people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them. They can't understand it, for only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. How many of y'all at Thanksgiving or Christmas have witnessed to your family members, and they're like, oh, Carter, he's crazy. He doesn't know anything. He's a Jesus freak. How many of y'all have had that experience? I know I have, because... It says there, the natural man thinks the things of God are foolish. And y'all know that word there, the foolish, that word there, the Greek word for that word foolish is Moriah, M-O-R-I-A. And we get our English word derived from that, moron. And do you know what the definition of a moron is? It's the highest classification of an imbecile or an idiot. And so what has happened... What has happened is your friends, family members, loved ones, co-workers, when you start um, witnessing the natural man, the, the strong man in their life, Satan has blinded their eyes to the gospel and they think it's all idiotic and moronic because they can't understand it. That's why when we go up to them, we speak the word of God in love to their spirit man and they can't help but pray. Amen? So go back to Hebrews 4, and then look at 1 Peter. Y'all are going to love this. Some of y'all may run around this room. 1 Peter. I'm going to go to where I've got it, and then we'll read it. Yeah. So I have some notes here. All right, 1 Peter 1.23, the New King James says, Having been born again... Not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, say the word of God, which lives and abides forever. And y'all know the Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but what's the rest of that scripture? His word will remain, right? And so 
this, the Word of God, y'all see these black words on these white pages? Did y'all know there's enough power to bring itself to pass? God is waiting on you to speak His Word out of your mouth so He can confirm it with the sign. Isn't that wonderful? And look at what the New Living says. For you've been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last for forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. And, and at the end it says, and that word is the good news that was preached to you. But let's look at what the Message Bible says. Your new birth comes from God's living word. Just think, a life conceived by God himself. Isn't that wonderful? And let's look at the passion. It says, This seed that he planted in you can never be destroyed, but it will live and grow inside you forever. Isn't that wonderful? I would like right now for you all to think back before you got saved. I'm sure there was someone, maybe you got saved um, as soon as you heard the word. Maybe someone told you about it and then later on, um, you received Jesus, but the seed, the Word of God, had to be planted on the inside of you. And I like to say it's like a Holy Ghost injection with the incorruptible seed, the Word of God. Um, it will not return void. God's watching over that Word to perform it. I was with um, a pastor in Maine. This was a few years ago. And we were, before I went to minister at the church, we went out camping, me, my friend, and the pastor. We just went out there praying out in the boondocks and uh, at this little cabin. And it was cold. The heater wasn't working. It was like a vacation rental thing. And so the guy came and was working on the, the heater. And we just continued talking about the Lord and sharing and I felt led to talk to this guy about Jesus because he was hearing us as he was working on the heater. Thank God he got the heater fixed. Because uh, when I get cold and my toes get cold, I'm building a fire because I'm going to get warm. Amen? So this guy was listening to us, and I said, Hey, sir, I just want to let you know um, God loves you. He's got a great plan for your life. And, and I said, You might have heard us talking, but I said, I'm not saying this would happen, but if you died right now, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? He's like, oh, man, I don't, I don't know about all that. And I said, well, Romans 3 says all have sinned. So I started quoting the scriptures, and I said, Romans 6 says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life. Romans 10 says, everyone who calls on the Lord will be saved. I said, say this prayer with me, Heavenly Father. He said the prayer with me. And then I had this cool little Cambridge leather New Testament in my pocket. I carried it everywhere I went. I, that was a black one. Now I have a maroon one. And uh, um, I felt like I was supposed to give it to him. And so I said, here, I want to give you this Bible. Oh, I don't need that Bible. My sister's giving me a bunch of them. I've got them on the shelf at home. <laughs> so at some point, his sister ministered to him which he injected him with the Word of God at some point. And I know a lot of us, I know I'm speaking for me, I've preached to my family members. Most of them all now are saved because I've learned. I, when I first started doing this, I'd condemn them, tell them they're going to hell, all this. Not the right way to do it. That was years ago. But now they're all saved. But I, at first, when you preach to them, they're getting the Word. So now y'all just love on them. Amen? Just start loving on them. Buy them something for Christmas and their birthday they'd actually like. My wife and I worked for Kenneth Copeland, as you know, and years ago we would get a 70% discount on all the product. And so guess what our family members got for their birthdays? A Kenneth Copeland Bible, a Kenneth Copeland devotional, you know, a book. You know, because, and they were, oh, thanks, you know, thank you, another devotional of faith to faith, hallelujah, you know. But the Lord corrected us. He said, buy them something they'd actually like, and love will get you um, further along with them than preaching to them, because they'll know. So look at um, Matthew 24. It says, heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. Psalm 138.2 says, You've magnified your word 
above all your name. Say the word of God is the power of God. Now, we do this in love. We already read 1 John, but I want you to see Psalm 512. Turn there. And, you know, I following Brother Copeland, Jerry Savell, that Psalm 512, it does say favor in the King James amp. But I read it out of the New Living. You know, I read it out of the New Living um, concerning evangelism and even being a Christian and it amazed me what it says here look at Psalm 512 New Living it says for you bless the godly O Lord you surround them with your shield of love and the passion there says he covers us with a canopy of kindness so if the Lord tells me to go witness to y'all like this, maybe you two ladies on a, maybe y'all are sitting on a bench at the mall or something. If the Lord tells me to witness to y'all, first of all, I'm covered with the canopy of kindness, right? So I can't offend y'all. I'm covered with the shield of love. It's almost like I'm a superhero and there's a force field around me. And that force field is the love of God, right? So if I'm, if that love is a filter, then I can't say anything that would offend you. And then, coming back towards me, y'all can't say anything that would offend me. First of all, if y'all reject what I'm saying, you're not rejecting me, you're rejecting him. That's part of that being self-centered, right? As we step, Riley gets out of the way and we promote Jesus. So, if I'm covered with the shield of love, a canopy of kindness, I can't offend you, you can't offend me. Um, And so, it's wonderful. And look at the next one, it said... If God is love and God is on the inside of you, then you are love. Amen? So I'm looking at love right now. Amen? I'm looking at a room full of love. Turn to 1 Corinthians 13. And if you are love, then we can read these scriptures this way. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Riley is patient and kind. When you see love, put your name there because you're love. When I'm out witnessing tonight, Riley is patient and kind. Riley is not jealous or boastful, proud or rude. How many of y'all have been witnessed to before and it's been a little rude? I have. Well, that was not God. Amen? Because God is not rude, is he? God is love, so it says love is not rude. Well, Brother Riley, they're using Scripture and holding up Scripture. Well, the devil knows Scripture, right? Love is not rude. Riley's not rude. Riley does not demand his own way. Now, I can tell you all, everybody I talk to will be saved. How can you say that? That's very bold for you to say that, right? Well, because I know I'm going to use the Word of God. I'm going to do it in love, and he says his word will not return void. So I have faith in his word that he's going to perform what he said he would do. Amen? So if I go up to them and I share the scriptures with them, I do this in love, and they say, I'm not, I'm not comfortable saying that prayer right now. All right, God bless you. We want to invite you to Lord of Hosts Church and our event this weekend, the Flashpoint event. God bless you, and then move on. Love does not demand his own way or her own way. And look at this. Love is not irritable. Love keeps no record of being wronged. Maybe when I started going through this, my wife and I gave a friend. um, He was going to do some work for us, and they needed to get into an apartment. They just had a baby. They needed $2,000 to get into an apartment. They were going to do some work for me. So we fronted them the 2000 so they could get into the apartment, and I never got the work done. And so every time I would see him, I wanted to confront him about the, the $2,000, and this went on for years. And it just, and the Lord said, love keeps no record of being wronged. And the Lord had me to sow a seed. He said, it's better sowing that seed than holding that grudge. So I just said, hey, brother, you don't owe me that anymore. 
Don't worry about the work. God will take care of me. I just want to sow it as a seed. Thank you, thank you. And then I got free. Amen. So love, maybe the Lord is dealing with y'all on something. Maybe that was for someone. I would just say sow it as a seed. Love does not rejoice about injustice, but love rejoices when the truth wins out. And we could translate that word truth because Jesus said, thy word is truth. So we could say love rejoices when the word wins. And the word's going to win tonight because we're going to, uh, we're going to, minister it in love and I want to say this you guys and ladies are ministers of eternal life you know we heard we're soul winners we're soul winners but you are a minister of eternal life because you actually minister eternal life to someone when you share Jesus with them you share the word with them Jesus was the word made flesh so when you share Jesus you're sharing the word of God and it says, love never gives up, no matter how bad Uncle Jimmy looks at the um, Thanksgiving table or at Christmas, love never gives up. Love on them. Love them into the relationship with Jesus. Love never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Love never fails. And then... Um, we know in 1 Peter 4, 8, love covers a multitude of sins. And I wrote this here. This is how we should act. The love of God should ooze and emanate from us in such a way that people want what we have. And what we have is nothing of ourselves. It's nothing short of the supernatural love of God that's been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That lady today, she was like, thank you for being so nice to all of our employees. Well, it was I was being nice because that was the love of God in me, and I wasn't doing it just to get a salvation or to get a, a check on my gospel belt. Amen? Y'all know I'm in it for the numbers, right? Because I count, if you see any of my social media, I'm putting numbers up there all the time, but each number represents someone who's not going to hell. And my heart is not just checking a box or, or doing my deal. It's really loving the people and letting God use me. And I like this in Jude 23. Let's um, read the actual scripture. This is so good. And y'all know Jude is just one chapter in verse. But I, I want to read in verse 20 because we've heard this scripture, but we don't read it through but Jude verse 20 says but you dear friends must build each other up in your most holy faith pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ who will bring you eternal life in this way you will keep yourself safe in God's love see if we remain in his love we're going to be safe safe from all sorts of things then it goes on to say in verse 22 and you must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. We have friends and family members who are not living like they should. You should show mercy to those. Love on them. Then I like what 23 says, Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Let me ask you, if you're being snatched, do you have a choice? So tonight, the people we walk up to, do they have a choice whether they're going to get saved or not? Because when we share the word of God with them, whether they pray with us or not, they will be saved. Amen? Because his word does not return void. So it says, rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Show mercy still to others, but do so with great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their lives. Not hating the sinner, amen. We love, regardless tonight, what they look like, act like, whatever gender they claim to be, whatever pronouns they use, whatever they look like, we're going to love the person because that person needs Jesus regardless of where they're at, amen. On their journey, wherever they say, I believe in a higher power, we don't try to... Um, when I like with her standing in front of me today saying she was spiritual, she believes in a higher power. I didn't try to just preach to her 
and to prove her wrong. I want to hear what they have to say. And then I want to share the word of God with them and then lead her in the prayer. And then the Lord, the Holy Spirit will get her into that relationship. It's, my, it's not my job right there to just preach at her and tell her where she's wrong with her, her doctrine or where, what her beliefs are. It's my job to love her and lead her to Jesus. Amen? And then turn to the next one. How do we have a sound mind when we're witnessing? God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. The Word of God's the power of God, right? We do this in love. And how do we have a sound mind when we're witnessing? Well, I made it easy for you. I wrote a script that you can use. And does anybody speak Spanish? We have Spanish on the back. I'll show you how to do this in Spanish, and you can correct me if I, if I mess up. My girls laugh at me, and they say, Dad, you're saying Tex-Mex. It's not Spanish because <laughs> I'm from Texas. So, um, But I just want to go over this real quick, and Carter, I'll use you just a second. Uh, he'll be my guinea pig, do a little role play. But before we go out, we pray and ask the Lord, where should we go? And tonight, um, because I don't know the area around here, we're just going to go to Walmart here. We'll break up into teams, and uh, we'll pray. The Lord may show you to go somewhere, and then we're going to come back and be here, be back here at like 9.15, because I want y'all's testimonies. I want because it's good to hear each other's experiences and learn from it, and then we'll have a quick testimony time. Then we'll, um, then we'll dismiss. We'll pray over the salvations. But we pray before we go, and I do it like we go to Walmart so you guys and ladies will make this part of your daily life. Yes, this is an event we're putting on. We're doing the Flashpoint event. Y'all are having open heavens. This is an event, but it should be a lifestyle because I'm teaching y'all how to make it a lifestyle. A lot of y'all go to Walmart. A lot of y'all go to Target. All of y'all get gas somewhere. You see and interact with people. Does any of y'all do DoorDash or order pizza? Someone comes to your door or you get Amazon or you see people in your yard? Yes, we interact with people every day, so... I've made it to where this can become a lifestyle. So when you see someone, you just start conversation. Hey, man, how's it going? Where are you from? Oh, you know, I'm from Omaha. Okay. Um, well, you know, you start talking. Have you been enjoying the weather? Thank God it's getting a little cooler. You know, you start talking about there's so many things we could talk about nowadays. But when I talk to someone like that, it's to get them to the gospel. Um, you say, hey, do you, do you go to church anywhere? And, and if you go to this church, you should have ladies, you should have these in your purse. Guys, you should have some of these in your wallet, in your vehicles. When y'all Do any of y'all go through drive through fast food? I won't tell Pastor Hank. You can raise your hand. <laughs> but when you go through fast food, buy the people behind you and say, hey, I'm from uh, Lord of Hosts Church. We want to bless you. You know, there's so many ways you can do this, but and the Lord will show you. But this is the most important question you could ask them. And I always say this before I ask it. And I always say, I'm not saying this would happen, but one day, a long time from now, when you pass away or if you died right now, where would you go? I don't say heaven or hell because I want to hear what they have to say. We as Christians love to do all the talking, you know, because they're sitting there. Um, if you died right now, where are you going to go? Where they're, they're thinking. And so you're going to want to talk for them, heaven or hell, you know, because we get nervous, right, because we're finally doing this. But don't say heaven or hell. Let them tell you because we want to hear what they have to say. If they say heaven, then ask them this next question. Um, if they say anything else, go straight to the Scriptures. Well, man, if you died right now, where were you going to go? I'm going to go in the ground six feet under. Don't say, oh, man, what, really? <laughs> go straight to the Scriptures. Um, and then if they say, well, man, I'd go to heaven, then ask him this next question. If God were to say, why should I let you into heaven, what would you tell him? I'm a pastor's kid. Does, will that get you to heaven? Or I'm a Baptist or I'm Catholic. Go straight to the scriptures. 
if I ask you, if uh, God were to say, why should I let you into heaven, what would you tell him? What would you all tell me? Right. You would, I wouldn't say anything. I would say, well, how, how else can I pray for y'all? Um, and then if they say anything other than what we would say, go straight to the scriptures. Romans 3 says all have sinned. Romans 6 says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 10 says everyone who calls on the Lord will be saved. And then say, say this prayer with me. So Carter, come up here. And I'm putting a mint in my mouth. Cause, and I have these for y'all. Please don't pray with someone if you don't have a mint in your mouth. Because we, <laughs> we don't want to offend them with our dragon breath. I didn't receive Holy Spirit for several years because I went up front and every person I talked to ran me off with their dragon breath. I'm just joking, but y'all know what I'm saying. So I see this guy. Um, I prayed. The Lord said, go to Walmart. I'm in Walmart. I have all these things in my pocket. I've got a basket. I do need to get some things. So when we go in, we're going to get a basket. You may need to get a few things, too. We're not going to focus on shopping, but we're going to get some things because we, get, we, wanna be, we don't want to be just a solicitor. We want to be a shopper. So I'm going to get a few things for my room this week. And I see this guy, and it's like the Lord has highlighted him. And I know that's happened to y'all. You'll see someone, you're like, there's just something about that guy. i got to talk to him. Well, I'm going to go up and talk to him, and scoot up a little closer. they got a camera so they can see you. Um, I'm a, I see this guy, and maybe I prayed, and the Lord says, blue shirt. Or the Lord will give us a clue. Go to the uh, sporting goods section, and I see him looking at uh, fishing lures or hunting supplies. If I go over there and I see him, then I know I'm supposed to talk to him. So when I walk up to him, I'm just going to say, hey, sir, how you doing? There's so many choices here with all these fish and lures, right? How, can, how do we know what to choose, right? Are you from this area? Okay, cool. I'm Actually, I'm not from here. I'm from Texas. So, Yeah, but do you go to church anywhere here? Awesome. Where do you go? Oh, nice. Um, Act like you're not saved. Um, I just needed to say that before I ask the next question. So you go to church. Um, let me ask you, I ask everyone this question, not saying this would happen, though, but um, if you died right now, where would you go? Okay, well, let me ask you this. Thanks for being honest. Um, but if God were to say, why should I let you into heaven, what would you tell him? All right, well, we need more good people in the world, right? Well, look at this. Romans 3 says all have sinned. Romans 6 says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life. And Romans 10 says everyone that calls on the Lord will be saved. Say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, believe I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me, that Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. And rose again. I, give you my life. I give you my life. I want Jesus Christ, I want Jesus Christ to come into my life and into my heart. And into my heart. Amen. 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 Have you ever said that prayer before? I haven't. Praise God. That's wonderful. Well, I've got some more information for you. I want you to invite you. I know you said you go to Lord of Host Church, but I would encourage you, the next step is to get baptized. Tell Pastor Doug and Pastor Hank, some of the leadership there, what just happened. And if you go there, you obviously know we're having our Truth and Freedom Omaha and uh, the Opening the Heavens meeting next week. We'd love to see you there. And there's one more thing I want to pray with you about. Mark 16 says, if you believe, you'll lay hands on the sick and they'll get well. Do you have any kind of pain in your body that I could pray for? Uh, yeah. Let's take a okay, do you mind if I pray for you? Yeah, All right. Well, Lord, I just thank you. You said if we'd believe... We'd lay hands on the sick and they'd get well. Lord, I thank you for taking the pain, the problems out of his shoulder. Now in Jesus' name, never to return. Amen. Amen. Do something you couldn't do. How's that? That's great. Praise God. That's wonderful. Is there anything else I can pray with you about? No, that's it. Well, I'm going to be at Lord of Hosts Sunday, so I'd love to see you. Okay. If you see me, come find me and uh, I'd love to.
uh, visit with you a little more. Okay. All right. God bless you, brother. All righty. How hard was that? That's pretty easy, right? So what I want you to do the next few minutes is find someone you're sitting next to. You ask them the questions. You read them the scriptures. You pray with them. And then let them do the same with you. And then we'll come back and finish this up. Let's take about five minutes. And you do one another. And then that way that'll practice for us um, going out. If you're watching online or you're watching, you can download this. Uh, the church will have this for you, and you can practice with a friend or family member, and then we'll come back and finish this up. All right, did everybody get saved? Do y'all need another minute? Are y'all done? Praise God, I don't need to do an altar call after this. Isn't that wonderful? Y'all did my work for me. All right, I want y'all to be honest. Everybody look at me. Y'all be honest with me, because I've been honest with you. Did anyone say anything that was not on the card? Yeah. Amen. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for being honest. Say this after me. Stick to the card. Stick to the card. Stick to the card. Why am I saying this? Because we'll take rabbit trails, right? We'll want to preach to them. Now is not the time for discipleship. Now is the time to get through the, ask the questions, read the scriptures, have them say the prayer with you. Then you can start ministering to them. That's when discipleship happens. And I want, I got another question. Be honest with me. Did any of you say, would you like to say this prayer with me? Be honest. Thank y'all for being honest. Don't say that. When you, when you quote Romans uh, 10, 13, everyone who calls on the Lord will be saved. Say this prayer with me, Heavenly Father. Y'all are saved. Why are you saying that prayer? <laughs> no, that's how it works, though. You say, you quote the Word of God, then it causes a reaction because you place a demand on it. And that's what we do is we don't go into our own questions or, or man, if you died right now, where are you going to go? Heaven, heaven or hell? Don't even ask that question. And and uh, tell me your question was, you don't say, say that, you don't say, would you like to pray? Because I'm quoting Romans 3, Romans 6, Romans 10. They're getting an injection with the word of God, the incorruptible seed. And the Bible says faith comes by what? Hearing, Hearing what? The word of God, not Riley's personal testimony. So faith is coming, right? And I just read to y'all, the natural man thinks the things of God are foolish. So if I ask them a question right after I inject them with the incorruptible seed, the word of God that will not return void, if I say to their natural reasoning thinking, would you like to say this prayer with me? And we're by the tomatoes in Walmart. What's the natural man going to say? Because we're programmed that way, right? No, I don't want to pray with you. I think all this stuff is silly. We don't want them to say that. I was in Chipotle at our D.C. meeting years ago, and I've trained myself. As soon as the Lord says, say something, sow the seed, or do, I will immediately do it without thinking, right? Because our natural, we all, even though we've been saved all these years, we still have a natural thinking. It's like when pastor <clears throat> on the weekend will say, He's doing the offering message, and he'll say, Hey, Lord of Hosts Church, we're not trying to get any money from you. We're trying to get blessings to you. Pray and ask the Lord what he'd have you sow a seed tonight, what he would have you give. And you hear in your heart $100. And you're thinking, that wasn't God, that was the devil. <laughs> that $100 is for gas this week. Right? How many of us have done that? I've done it. Amen. The devil would not tell you to give $100 to the Lord of hosts, right? So our natural thinking would be like, oh my gosh, I've been saving that $100 bill in my billfold for months. No, the Lord would never, or the devil would never say that. And our, we have to train our natural thinking. So I was in Chipotle eating one of those big old burritos with another guy. We were setting up the D.C. meeting. 
and these four 20-something-year-old ladies walk by, and I hear in my spirit, talk to them. And um, I just immediately said, hey, ladies, where are y'all from? Y'all from this area? And three of them probably thought I was crazy. They walked to the door and was waiting. This one lady stayed. I'm from here. I said, well, do you go to church anywhere? And she said, yeah, I go to church. I said, well, I'm not saying this would happen, but if you died right now, where would you go? And she looked down and she said, not a good place. And I said, well, I want to let you know, Romans 3 says all of sin. Romans 6 says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 10 says everyone who calls on the Lord will be saved. Say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, she began to say the prayer, and when she said, I want Jesus Christ to come into my life, into my heart, she said, what are you trying to do, save me? I said, girl, you just got saved. Matter of fact, go get your friends. I need to talk to them. But the Lord showed me what happened there. When I quoted Romans 3, Romans 6, Romans 10, the Bible says they have to believe it in their heart and then confess it with their mouth, right? So she believed it because she wouldn't have said it if she didn't believe it. Before her mind engaged, oh my gosh, I'm getting saved right here in Chipotle. (laughs) Isn't that something? And so... We don't ask them if they want to pray. We tell them because today is the day of salvation. Amen. They need Jesus. And I want to read one more scripture before we pray to go out. I'm going to say one more. Don't hold me to it. But John 4, and I love this, and I have a limited amount of my books out on the table. They're free for y'all to have. Um, And it's I sent you to reap. But look at what Jesus said in John 4, 34. Jesus said, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. Jesus never got any glory for what he did on earth. He always pointed to the Father. He said, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Whatever he says, I say. Whatever he tells me to do, I do. He never got glory for himself. He said, You know the saying, And I want to point this out. Jesus said this is a saying. Four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. So based on this, your friends, your family members, your co-workers, the people we see tonight, they're ready to be saved. And then it says, the the fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages The fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. Isn't that wonderful? What joy awaits both a planter and harvester alike. You know the saying, one plants, another harvests. Jesus said that's true. And look at verse 38. He said, I sent you to what? I sent you to reap. Jesus is saying, Lord of hosts, church, believers that are here tonight, I sent you to be a reaper. And do reapers, do the people, like if you're going out and pulling the harvest, like if y'all have tomato plants, none of mine did very well this year because it was 100 degrees in Texas, over 100. So I didn't get a good harvest with my garden. But those good tomatoes on the vine did not have a choice when I chose to pick them. So these people, yes, they'll, they have a choice to say it or not. But we are reapers. We sow the incorruptible seed, and then we reap. Jesus said, I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others had already done the work, and now you will get together the harvest. Say, I'm a harvester. (laughs) And I said this, but I wrote it down in my Bible so I would remember to tell you, someone's eternal destiny is on the other side of your obedience. Someone's eternal destiny is on the other side of your obedience. And I I will say this is the pastors here want this to happen every week, every month. The pastors want this to happen. That's why we're doing this tonight is for y'all to engage and, um, and start doing this. And on the handout it says, We understand these things for we have the mind of Christ. And I like what Proverbs 20, 27 says, The Lord's light penetrates the human spirit, exposing every hidden motive. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. 
You can have a sound mind when you're witnessing because you know who you are in Christ and you use the pocket reference script. And I have Pastor George uh, had all these different ones I wanted to point out. There's all different ways to do this, but it all leads back to the script. Amen? Are there any questions before I pray, before we head out? Anybody have any questions? Praise God. Praise God. You don't have to have it memorized. Please don't try to do it tonight without reading your card because you're going to mess up. And the devil, the spirit of fear is going to put all these thoughts in your head and you're going to try to memorize it. You're going to mess up. You're going to be standing there. What was that scripture? And it's in your pocket when you can pull it out. And like I did with Carter, I just showed him what I was reading. And so you don't have to have it memorized. Just pull it out. Keep it in your pocket till you walk up to someone and the Lord says, hey, don't try to be cool and not pull it out. Matter of fact, uh, take a picture on your phone. That way when you're in Walmart, it'll be on your phone and not on the script. That way um, you can be looking at your phone. Turn it to the back. It's in Spanish. And so any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for saying that, because this is just what the Lord had me write. If you want to say, I confess my sin, did y'all know the only sin that will keep someone out of heaven is not believing in Jesus? Did y'all know that? In John 16, yeah, in John 16, he's talking about when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict you of sin because they don't believe in me. That's the only sin that will put someone in hell is not believing in Jesus. So that's why we didn't. If it makes you feel better when you say this prayer, Heavenly Father, I confess all my sins to you. I believe Jesus died. You say, I repent of my sin. If you want to add that, put your own flavor to it. I would just say stick to the card. Amen. And we have little uh, follow-up tracks out there in the lobby. Um, before we go, y'all can grab some of those. Any other questions real quick? Yes, sir. I have a limited amount. It's free. All of that stuff out there is free. Y'all can, y'all can grab it. Um, and then I can get y'all some. If you'll email me, it's just rstevenson at kcm.org. Or you can email me. I'll send y'all the PDF of it, uh, the digital copy. So any other questions before we pray? Before we pray, um, let's pull out this card. Did everybody get one of these? Praise God. Thank you. All right. I want you to write today's date down there. And then put your name in there because when we come back at 9.30, 9.15, we're going to hand these in. Put today's date, your name, and then it says my soul goal for today. Write tonight. My soul goal for tonight. What's a soul goal? Well, it's a number of how many people... You're going to ask the Lord for tonight in Walmart or when we pray, the Lord, the Lord may tell y'all to go somewhere else and be back here. We're only going to have about an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, but the Lord can do a miracle in an hour. Amen. We've seen hundreds of people be saved in one hour when we have a group this size. So, right. So let's all say this. Heavenly Father, I need a soul goal. For tonight, I need a number in Jesus' name. Now, whatever number he dropped in your spirit, just write it down. And then the number of people who said yes to Christ, that will be those that prayed the salvation prayer with you. Um, you don't have to write down the ones who said no. This is just for a survey, if you're doing a survey. And then there's a little line there. You can write my email down if you need it, rstevenson at kcm.org. Spell my name with a P-H, or I won't get the email, r-s-t-e-p-h-e-n-s-o-n at kcm.org. So I want to pray with you all, and then we'll. I want to get a picture because we're creating history together. If you all would come up here after the prayer, 
Uh, we'll pray, run to the restroom, grab the things, and then we'll go. How many of y'all are going out with us tonight? How many of you are like, I can't go out tonight? Anybody? Thank you for being honest. So I have, before I pray, I've, I've got an assignment for you. Um, and we all can do this. Pull out your phone. Because I want you to act on what you've learned tonight. We, we need to activate and go to your contacts and scroll through there and see who's not saved. Call out a name. Why are y'all laughing? <laughs> no, somebody give me a name of someone who's not saved. Mary? Mary? Okay, I want you to call Mary as soon as we dismiss or as you're out there using the restroom or whatever. And I want you to... When you're in the car? All right. Oh, your phone? Well, I, here's what I want you to do. Let me have everybody's attention. We know where Mary lives. We know if she goes to church. And we probably know by the fruit on the tree if she died right now where she'd go, right? So we're not going to say any of that. Here's what you're going to say. And you're going to have your card out ready. Hey, Mary, how are you? Oh, pretty good. Hey, I, I felt like I needed to call you. I met this guy named Riley. He told me to call you. Who's Riley? It doesn't matter. He just wanted me to let you know that Romans 3 says all have sinned. Romans 6, 23 says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life. Romans 10, Mary, says everyone who calls on the Lord will be saved. Mary, say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. I give you my life. I want Jesus Christ to come into my life and into my heart. Amen. Mary, that's wonderful you said that prayer with me. Hey, I'm going to call you back. I want to invite you to church Sunday. I will uh, call you back, text you in the morning. I know it's getting late. I love you, Mary. God bless you. Bye-bye. So you're going to make it short and sweet because in the natural, you're going to want to preach Genesis to Revelations to Mary <laughs> because you're so excited that she just got saved, right? But you're going to make it short and sweet. Can you do that? If I said I can guarantee you that person on your phone who's not saved will get saved tonight, would you do it? Well, I can guarantee you because his word will not return void. Amen? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, well, y'all don't have to repeat after me. <laughs> See, I have that repeat after me anointing. Lord, I thank you for this awesome group. Praise God for all the souls that will be saved in Omaha, this Council Bluffs, this area, Father. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this church, the people tonight. Lord, I thank you tonight. Be specific with each one. Lord, show them. Highlight people. Lord, just let the love of God ooze out of them. Lord, I thank you that people will see light shining. They'll see physical lights beaming, Lord. I thank you that bodies will be healed, lives will be saved and touched, Lord. I just thank you for miracles, signs and wonders happening tonight, Lord, in that Walmart. And Lord, as I'm speaking, be specific with each person where they should go. Lord, they know this area better than me. Lord, show them an area of town that's close, that they can go Go there and then get back here so we can have testimony time. Lord, we'll give you all the praise for everyone saved, healed, set free tonight in Jesus' name. Everybody said?